auditory pathway starts from hair cells which are present in cochlea these hair cells are of two types that is the outer hair cells and there are inner hair cells and uh, both of them receive the afferent and efferent however major afferents come from inner hair cells and the major efferents go to the outer hair cells but both have the afferents and the efferents now the afferents from these outer and inner hair cells form the auditory component of the vestibulo cochlear nerve and these are basically the dendrites of the bipolar neurons which are present in the spiral ganglion so these are bipolar neurons because they have a long dendrite process and then there is exon which goes to the medulla so these afferents form the auditory component of the vestibulo cochlear nerve now this spiral ganglion is also present in the cochlea where it is present it is present in the modulus of cochlea fine now at medulla they actually synapse all the fibers of this exon synapse and they synapse in nuclei in the medulla known as ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei so first synapse is occurring in the cochlear nuclei from ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei there is diversion of the pathways and the auditory pathway goes in four direction so this is the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei from here most of the pathways actually go and synapse on the nuclei present in the medulla and this is the superior olivary nuclei again superior olivary nuclei are two there is medial and lateral superior olivary nuclei so most of the fibers go synapse on the opposite side so suppose this is the midline okay and i am drawing pathway of only one side remember so there will be ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei this side also for simplicity i am drawing only one side so remember most of the pathways travel on the contralateral side going to the superior olivary nuclei then some fibers also go to the ipsilateral superior olivary nuclei so that is the second pathway third from here some of the fibers directly go to the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus nucleus of the lateral lemniscus and here it forms the the bundle of fibers forms the lateral lemniscus so that is the third pathway and also some of the fibers go to the reticular formation reticular formation in the pons so all these group of fibers have different processing going on remember that is why there is so much diversion of the pathways we will see what is the processing little bit later let us move on further with the auditory pathway so from superior olivary nuclei then again the fibers ascend and they reach to another nucleus of the midbrain that is the inferior colliculus again from here they reach to the inferior colliculus okay and here also nucleus um, the fibers which have synapsed in the lateral lemniscus they also reach to the inferior colliculus so these fibers which reach to the inferior colliculus they are third order neurons okay first order neuron synapsed in the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei second order neuron mostly the synapses is occurring in the superior olivary nucleus and from there the third order neuron it is reaching to the inferior colliculus from inferior colliculus these fibers reach to the thalamus and there is nucleus medial geniculate body so there again there is synapsing of the neurons and from medial geniculate body there are auditory radiations okay auditory radiations and then from there they reach to the auditory cortex and where is this auditory cortex present it is present in the superior temporal gyrus superior temporal gyrus okay with this now let us see what is going on at different levels in the auditory pathway you see in the cochlea what is going on in the inner hair cells there is basically discrimination between the pitch and loudness okay so in the cochlea along the length of the cochlea there is basically the fibers which respond to different pitch at the base of the cochlea the fibers respond to higher pitch and uh, at the 
apex of the cochlea the fibers respond to lower pitch so at the level of the cochlea itself there is coding going on for the pitch of the sound and loudness of the sound for this i have made another video that is theories of hearing for pitch discrimination you can have a look on that so from the cochlea that discrimination between the pitch has started and the loudness is also coded so this information reaches to the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei now from the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei the fineness between this pitch discrimination starts so here itself there is something known as lateral inhibition okay so all the fibers are reaching there but uh, you might be aware that in sensory system lateral inhibition is one concept which is important for increasing the contrast between the different sensations coming from different areas basically so information from one area inhibits the information from just a nearby area so that is lateral inhibition that fineness of information starts in ventral dorsal cochlear nuclei especially for pitch discrimination and why it is traveling to so many different areas you see the information of pitch directly travels to the lateral discrimination so here whatever fineness of information has happened that goes directly to the lateral lemniscus but the information also goes to the superior olivary nucleus where now the second level processing starts so that is for the localization of the sound localization of the sound so what happens you see that this superior olivary nucleus receives information from both sides okay so from this side also the information will cross and reach to the opposite superior olivary nucleus now depending on from where the sound is coming say suppose the sound is coming from the center both of these superior olivary nuclei will receive the information together however if the sound is coming from say somewhat left side what will happen that left ear superior olivary nucleus will receive same information little bit earlier while right superior olivary uh, nucleus will receive same information little bit later and we are saying that the information is going to the opposite side also so from left ear this superior olivary nucleus will receive the information first and from right ear same superior olivary nucleus will receive the same information little bit later so there is something known as time lag okay and there is also intensity lag okay because the sound has to travel little bit more distance so little bit less intensity happens from the information which is reaching from the ear of the opposite side so this information that is the difference in the time lag and difference in the intensity lag reaching to the superior olivary nucleus helps in localization of the sound again a detailed video on this localization of the sound i have already made you can have a look on that as well then moving on further i said that information is also going to the reticular formation and what is reticular formation responsible for reticular formation is important for activation of the nervous system because from here information goes up also and there is generalized information which is going to activate the nervous system and it goes down into the spinal cord as well so your awake state alert state it is caused by activation of the reticular formation so our responses to loud sound which make us uh, alert to the sound suppose if we are sleeping and there is some loud sound suddenly we wake up that is being caused by the information which is going to the reticular formation fine next going into the inferior colliculus that is the tectum what is happening here see suppose you are focusing somewhere you are uh, uh, maybe reading or watching the this video suddenly you hear a loud sound somebody claps and you turn your head towards that loud sound that is happening because of the information going to the inferior colliculus so our head and eye movements which occur towards a loud sound for that the reflex movement for that this tactile information is important then the information goes to the medial geniculate body and relays here and you know that uh, thalamus is the relay center because lot of information is being communicated uh, within the thalamus itself and lot of processing is going on here and why is it important thalamic relay center 
because it is the gateway of the information the information how much information is going to the auditory cortex and how much information is also coming from the other sensory systems or uh, what is the state of the um, cortex that all decides that how much auditory information is going to the cortex say suppose for example you are sleeping in that case you see the responses to loud sound are intact because the information is going to the lower centers as well but how much you are able to appreciate the intensity of the sound while sleeping it will be very difficult so initially maybe you might become aware of the sound you will become awake and there will be postural movement but actual discrimination of the sound you cannot make because the information has not gone to the auditory cortex that well because our gateway has little bit stored that information some processing has happened there so that is the main thalamic uh, nuclei function then the information goes to the auditory cortex now in auditory cortex there are tonotopic maps what are these tonotopic maps uh, as we know that in other sensation also there are maps which are basically for the localization of the sensation from different areas so in auditory system there are tonotopic maps that is the maps which are based on pitch okay and mostly the maps which are for low frequency they are basically arranged laterally anterolaterally actually and uh, then as we move posteromedially the maps are of for high frequency so there is arrangement uh, like this for the maps and why i am saying maps are not a single map because actually there are six maps in the auditory system six maps and why do we need six maps well there are different maps for different characteristics of the sound for example we need to find about the pitch okay then we need to localize the sound then we need to find out how complex the sound is so all that we have six different maps in the auditory cortex then from this auditory cortex which is basically the primary auditory cortex which is the area number 41 and 42 the information also goes to association area association auditory cortex and all the association areas of the cortex basically in receive information from other sensory areas and that is very important for interpreting any information because from the environment we interpret information in a holistic way we don't separate all the information okay this is the sound this is the vision when we are suppose watching a movie everything we interpret in a holistic way so that is going on in the association area and very important in case of audition is the vernicase area which is important for interpreting the meaning of the sound so that is the fundamental of the auditory pathway which goes from bottom to the top but there are some top down pathways as well so before going into that little bit just we will uh, summarize this so what is happening from outer hear cells and inner hear cells there is the auditory component of the vestibular cochlear nerve which is the bipolar cells located in the spiral ganglion in the cochlea then information goes to the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei which is present in the medulla then there is crossing over lot of crossing over most of the fibers cross over to the superior olivary nuclei of the other side again present in the medulla some fibers go to the superior olivary nucleus of the same side from here information is going to the inferior colliculus which is present in the midbrain okay and that is via the lateral lemniscus pathway that is the some fibers here also go to the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus some are basically synapsing and here is the lateral lemniscus then from inferior colliculus the fibers go to the medial geniculate body okay so that is medial geniculate body that is located in the thalamus and then from here the fibers are going to the auditory cortex so this is the simplified auditory pathway and what is the mnemonic to remember it i remember it like colic m a colic m a and what is this there is cochlear nuclei co is cochlear nuclei o l is olivary nucleus superior olivary nucleus before because it is coming first so i remember it as a superior superior olivary nucleus then there is lateral lemniscus ll then there is inferior 
colliculus and M is the medial geniculate body, A is the auditory cortex. So that is the mnemonic to remember the auditory pathway. Let's go into some more details about the auditory pathway that is the top down pathway. Some information is also coming from top to down and why it is important. Again, I'll give the example of focusing. Suppose you are uh, focusing on something, watching movie or reading. What happens during that time? Our sensitivity to other sounds diminishes. So you can try this. Basically sit in an environment where fan is on. You will hear the environmental sounds as well. So try to focus on the environmental sounds. Now try to focus somewhere else where you start reading say suppose. And you will notice that the other sounds basically have disappeared. Now you are not able to even listen to that sound. So how it is happening? That is because of some thalamic processing, yes, and also because of some top-down pathway which is causing the information to change which is coming from IHC and OHC. So this outer hair cell basically, there is change in the length of this outer hair cell and because of this change in the length of the outer hair cell, the sensitivity of the basilar membrane of the cochlea to respond to sound changes. Then also the efferents which are going to the inner hair cell. From here, it basically it impinges on these afferents only. And this decreases the response of this afferents to the stimulus. So this is top down pathway. Very important for our sensitivity to various sounds in our environment. We are basically living in a noisy world. So we need to choose where we focus and which sounds we should hear. However, any dangerous sound, I said that any dangerous loud sound, even then your um, cortex can respond because of the activation of the reticular formation. Fine. Now we will end the session with some lesions. If you have understood the auditory pathway, you will understand that if there are lesions at various places, what can be the problems? So suppose there is lesion of this hair cells, what will happen? See, not all the hair cells will die immediately. There will be progressive loss of the hair cells. And that happens in old age or when there is consistent exposure to loud sounds. So in that case also there is hair cell damage. So there will be progressive hearing loss. Progressive hearing loss. Okay. So that is one. Then what will happen if there is damage to the ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei in the medulla? The information will not go further, isn't it? So, there will be hearing loss. Okay? Then, what will happen if there is damage to the superior olivary nuclei? What is the function of superior olivary nuclei? The processing for the localization starts here. Right? So, this superior olivary nuclei, if that is damaged, we will have problem with the localization of the sound. But can... But can we determine the pitch and loudness of the sound? Yes, we can determine because this is another pathway which is going via the lateral lemniscus and uh, um, synapsing in the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus and reaching to the inferior colliculus. So yes, we can determine the pitch and loudness but we will not be able to localize the sound properly because the localization pathway travels from here to the auditory cortex and has a different map. So that is not happening. Then what will happen if there is a damage to the auditory cortex? Will we able to hear? Yes, if there is damage to auditory cortex of one side only, you see, we are telling that most of the fibers cross and reach to the auditory cortex. So we will be able to hear properly. Only little bit hearing loss might be there. But otherwise not much problem happens because auditory information travels bilaterally. Understanding. However, we will not be able to localize the sound properly. There will be some problem in determining the complexity of the sound. Differentiating, very fine differentiation of the pitch. That may be problem. Yes, somewhat crude differentiation we will be able to do. The responses to the sound will be intact. The reflex responses to the sound will be intact. So hearing loss Full hearing loss will not occur when there is damage to the auditory cortex. And what will happen if there is damage to the Wernicke's area? That is then interpretation of the speech problem. For that again I have made another video. 
please have a look on that as well so that was all about the fundamentals of the auditory pathway thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button please share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you